Now, in a uh, recent video, we took a look at the uh, sleeved monopole, and uh, this antenna is a pretty good antenna in its own right. I mean, it's a solid 5 dB antenna, and it can be modified to cover a whole range of uh, different frequencies. And uh, I said in that video that I was excited about this because of uh, something else, and that something else is uh, to use this in a uh, waveguide or a cantenna as an upgrade to a simple monopole. Now my first thought on uh, seeing this antenna was um, could I incorporate this into a waveguide to uh, give it more gain without having to make uh, the waveguide uh, longer and indeed as soon as I saw that Cisco antenna the sleeve monopole um, that's what I uh, took a look at first and you're going to see some of my failures as well uh, during this video and I'll talk about why I think some things work and some things don't but uh, I did take to modifying this modifying its length as I said and its diameter this one is a nice one this works uh, rather well in its own right made out of copper uh, that works well. Uh, this is an aluminium because I wanted to see if we could uh, use aluminium without uh, soldering and uh, this one is also a nice one but this is the brass one that I uh, initially settled on and it's the one I've shown you in a recent video. Uh, just at this time we've got a uh, four hole uh, panel mount uh, SMA there, the can that I use on my uh, cantennas. So uh, let's take a look at the cantenna because we're going to use the same cantenna uh, in this video and just change the driven elements and test uh, with a uh, test uh, signal that I've set up to see if we get an increase in gain. Now this is the cantenna we're going to use, it's uh, a piece of uh, aluminium tube, it is uh, 96 uh, millimetres on the inside diameter and uh, it's uh, 3 millimetres thick so it's a nice uh, piece of uh, tubing to use and if you look down there you can see the original Cisco uh, sleeved uh, monopole down there and this is the first ever test that I did with this so let me hook this up to a uh, test setup that I've uh, put together and we'll do a scan and uh, we'll see how good this is and uh, we'll talk about that after we've uh, given it a scan but you must admit it does look uh, pretty impressive down in there it looks like it'll uh, do their business but uh, let's hook it up and find out so here's the setup then i'm just doing it on the bench at this level we're not going to break any records with this we just want to see um, any increases in gain from the different elements so we're starting off with the first one the cisco one which i took straight out of that antenna connected it up to a waveguide uh, just to see if it would work so we've got this hooked up to an alpha card and we're going to give it a scan and as I say I've set up a uh, test signal it's going through two brick walls and it's also got a 3 dB attenuator on it just uh, to kind of mimic um, a test signal being a further distance away because remember a waveguide is uh, one of the best uh, antennas you can get for uh, range so we have to limit a little bit but uh, you'll see the test signal in a minute let's give this a scan and then we'll talk about uh, the results afterwards so here we are giving it a uh, scan then you can see the test signal there and it's at 58 percent it's uh, not a green signal uh, most of those green ones uh, are here in the lab with me uh, the top one and uh, the two um, ones below that are in my garden so i get wi-fi in my garden plus the repeater that's bringing the wi-fi into the lab but you can see there 58 percent that's the test signal that's pretty naff and uh, again some of these are uh, pretty close as well it's not operating anywhere near how you would expect a uh, cantenna to work at it uh, really is a poor signal so second test then we've got the uh, simple monopole antenna set up in there uh, again probably anything from 2 db to 2.5 db no more than that really um, use thicker material can get it up to about 2.5 but 2 db is uh, about the norm for a simple monopole antenna like this so if we're going on size you can see uh, a size difference compared to the last one you'd be uh, thinking that the uh, first one would do much better but uh, I guarantee you this is going to do a lot better than that first test. So second test then with this simple monopole antenna. 
and we can already see there on the uh, test signal 71% so a definite increase over that first test the little monopole is performing much better than the sleeved monopole from Cisco so a definite increase over that sleeve monopole now I'm just getting ready to uh, connect the uh, sleeved monopole to the canter and I thought I'd just quickly show you because I'm not going to go over the build as I said in this video but here I've got my uh, sleeve monopole now in the previous video when I showed you how to make one of these I used a seven or eight millimeter diameter tubing I can't remember now but uh, this is six millimeter diameter outer tubing and that small change in the diameter doesn't change any of the overall uh, measurements so if you just do what you saw in that video and uh, use a smaller diameter you'll be fine you don't have to change any of the measurements and the reason I'm using such a small diameter is for ease of connecting this you can see here I've uh, got the four holes drilled for uh, the panel mount there and uh, you can just fit in a uh, slightly bigger this is a, a seven millimeter hole to fit the six millimeter uh, sleeve tube in here and also put a little bit of uh, heat shrink tubing around the bottom so you don't actually short it out and that fits inside there quite nicely we can just screw it down right test number three with the uh, sleeved monopole on then let's give that a quick scan and we can already see with the uh, test signal, lovely green uh, test signal there, 83% we're getting. That's uh, phenomenal. That's uh, just slightly over 10% uh, of uh, increasing gain using Vista Stumbler like this. That's a definite, definite indication that the sleeved monopole is adding more gain to the uh, waveguide than a simple single monopole. I am really pleased with that that's excellent now if we think about what's happening inside the waveguide with these two elements and how they generate a uh, radiation field with the uh, RF energy in order to uh, basically radiate that energy out I mean that's what an antenna does if you think about the room and you think about uh, the limitations of a white waveguide um, as I said previously, you can't just use any circumference for a waveguide. For one, you've got to actually fit the wave inside the waveguide uh, that you're intending to use it for, so it can't be too small. If you have it too big, then it's no longer a waveguide. The wave is just bouncing around on the inside. It's also letting other frequencies in that you uh, don't want to use. Now, if you take a look at both of these elements, if you think about the volume inside of the waveguide itself this one is taking a lot more space up obviously and it generates its field from its outer edge from the surface of uh, you know the aluminium in this case so there's not a lot of room to generate a field inside of this waveguide because the element is taking up so much of that volume inside of the waveguide this would probably work better if I um, used um, a slightly bigger circumference and uh, that's something we can test when we have a theory if we use something that's say uh, 130 millimeters in diameter just to give that a test but again you know then it's no longer a waveguide but um, my theory is that it will work better than what you saw today but you know it won't be a waveguide because it's too big for 2.4 gigahertz now we take a look at the thinner one it's not taking up as much room inside the waveguide so there's a lot more room for it to expand out and radiate and then this radiation energy that the main driven element is producing is working inside of the waveguide just as intended and it's guiding that energy out or guiding the energy in and that's why I think that uh, this one doesn't work and uh, this one does now you may be asking yourself why don't I use one of these uh, little Hertzian uh, dipole antennas and the reason is that uh, this part of uh, the dipole here has to be a set measurement as does this one 25 millimeters uh, for 2.4 gigahertz now 
a waveguide needs to be grounded for it to work properly. If I were to ground this antenna to the waveguide, uh, you know, much the same way as we do on the monopole, this part is connected to the ground. The outer braid of the coax makes the connection on the SMA. This is the main driven element. Um, if I were to do that on this antenna, it would knock all the mathematics out of uh, whack, basically, changing the, this entirely, and then it won't work properly at 2.4 gigahertz. In fact, I've, I've tried it in the past. It doesn't really work at all, believe me. And, uh, you know, that's something you have to take into consideration. And I've tried lots of different things on this channel over the years, from uh, Yagi's to the, uh, the Wi-Fi gun to... Uh, putting uh, bi-quad elements in uh, waveguides and everything like that and I've never got anything to work that well especially when you compare it to uh, the humble monopole here the only thing I've really got to work well is uh, the Yagi the Yagi does work well inside of a waveguide if you use thin PCB like this and don't you have a traditional element on this because uh, for the same reason you see here or at least that's my theory so that's why i'm rather excited about this it certainly does take a waveguide up a level up a notch and uh, you know adds a lot more gain to that waveguide and normally what you would do to add more gain to a waveguide with a monopole element is just to make it longer and you can only do that so much until it becomes unwieldy, unwieldy and um, you know the uh, beam width is so narrow you have to be you know pretty precise especially if it's a short distance and uh, this represents a nice upgrade to that so i will be making some and uh, selling them probably in the new year i have found uh, a manufacturer who uh, provides uh, black uh, toilet brush uh, holders to use instead of the stainless steel one so i'll use that to differentiate between the two so a nice little upgrade um if you want me to uh, make a full out video showing you how to make one um, from scratch which you know as I said I have made uh, plenty of uh, waveguide videos on this channel in the past then uh, I will do but uh, you know just going on the previous video showing you how to make one of these and uh, you know the things you've seen today you should be able to uh, put one together for yourself but uh, if a lot of people ask for it then I don't mind making uh, a complete uh, build video in the new year so I don't want to make the video too long, so I'm going to uh, cut it off there. You will see uh, odd videos in the future with this one as well. I may do a video just dedicated to this one, taking a look on the network analyzer and the VSWR of this as well, which is uh, pretty low. It's actually lower than the uh, simple monopole, only by, I think, about uh, two digits, but uh, it's got a nice VSWR over on the network analyzer. And, um, you know, if you disagree with my theory that uh, uh, the reason why this doesn't work um, compared to the much thinner one, then please let me know. I uh, just love information and, uh, you know, we'll get round to reading anything that you uh, post below as well. But just going on my knowledge and understanding at this moment in time, that's uh, what I think is happening. There's just not enough space left over in the waveguide to generate a uh, radiation field around the uh, main driven element for it to work properly so if you did enjoy the video please uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, comments or questions drop them below and i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one